Hello everyone and welcome back to our Moneyball series with Paris FC. I did say we would start the first game of the season. We are going to get to that. We're going to play two games in today's episode. But I wanted to show you the sort of bits before that. I wanted to show you the, the first team meeting, the first press conference, and who our staff are going to be and that kind of stuff, right? So first thing to show you is this screen here, the supporters profile updates. We have hard commands, 11%, core, 32%, families, 23%, fair weather, 14%, 0% corporate, 20% casual. So we are the... We are the real football fans of Paris right here. That's what it's telling us right now. The club vision is develop players using the club's youth system, which is sort of preferred. But a major objective is to work within the wage budget, which obviously we should be able to do. If we're doing money, we'll save. We would hope that we can do that at some points. Uh, win promotion to League 1 is very desired. So we'll see how we go. Okay, meet your assistant manager. Tom Aubrey is going to be with us for the entirety of the save, I'd expect. He's a new gen. I'm assuming he's good. I don't really know. He's got a professional personality. And I always just like to bring in my own assistant manager to every save that I do because I just feel like in real life, you're going to bring in your own person, aren't you? And uh, we're going to bring in Tom. Tom is also a B licensed coach like me. And we'll go on this journey together. So we get on. Okay, then first being with the players. How's this going to go on our Burton save? It did not go very well. So let's see. I'm going to say, like, to take the opportunity to introduce myself. That. Oh, okay. I don't know. Determined. Not really sure what we're going with there. Insistent. Okay. I'll go neutral. Love it. Love neutral. We'll say secure promotion. Oh dear. Cyril says, come off it. We're not good enough to be promoted. Wow. That's that's the mandate I've been given. So you're going to have to be good enough. Insist. Positive. That went well. The media then. Start press conference. The overwhelming emotion is excitement. We'll say that. Uh, clubs driven with potential. There are no reservations at all. I'm not here to learn French. I'm here to win things. No problems in the dressing room. I'm entirely appropriate. All right, and that, that'll do, I think. Oh, no, hang on. There's one more. There's a, yeah, buzzer on the squads. I found some committed. We'll aim for the stars. And I said all the right things, I think. Right, Tom has just joined the club, so congratulations to him. He comes in and joins us. And I guess now I will see you for the first game of the season where we play against FCSM and QRM. So I'll see you then. Okay, welcome back. So it's the first game of the season coming up here now. So what you're going to see now with me is me picking the team. Now I'm basing it on the factors I'll explain here. So the goalkeeper, one's 27, one's 39. One looks, according to the coaches, now the star rating, don't forget, is just your staff member's opinion. And sometimes that can be quite wrong. So you can't always take that, but that's a pretty obvious one to me. So that's going to be an easy one there. Uh, the back three. So we've got a few decent ones here. Let's get this one here, Jordan Lefort. Now... He's actually naturally left back, which is probably good. It means he's quite mobile, I'd expect. So I was going to report, and I look at the pros and cons of the coach's opinion. Uh, it doesn't mention pace, so even though he's a natural fullback, it doesn't say that he's actually that that fast, but he's comparing it as a as a fullback. So uh, that's interesting, but yeah, he's, he's going to be our centre-back. Let's get him on a little training regime here so he can play there. They reckon this guy's our other top centre-back. They say that he's good in the end. He's a really good player for League of Two sides. So yeah, he looks like a pretty good player to put in. So according to these two players here, it's a pretty close call whether it's going to be Samir here. And they mentioned that he is good at passing, good at positioning. And then you've got uh, Yusuf here. And they mention right decision making, consistent, good at marking, relishes big matches. Uh, we don't really care about that as much. Like we're just caring about the stats that they are. But obviously we don't know the players. We're going to have to play them all to see what stats they output for us in the first season. So straight sort of them between these two. I'm not really sure. I'm going to go with Samir just based off the fact that they think he's going to be better than the coaches, so he's got more potential. But that's it. The coaches' opinions, that's what it is there. Left wing back's pretty simple, I think, because this lad is only 19, so he's got more potential. I'm going to go with that guy, I think. But then I think Florian Hannon is my backup, uh, sort of a vice captain. Lacking a bit of pace, though, apparently. Yeah, not sure. Probably more like an old school fullback, isn't he? Let's play the fullback first. We'll, we'll play it safe, early doors. We have got to win, though, straight away, don't forget, because the expectations promotion, like, we haven't got time to, like, figure out results and performances, uh, which is going to make this really tough. Now, right wing back, there are no right backs in the squad at all. So you're going to have to play somebody there. I've actually taught Patrick to play there. I'm pretty sure before the season, before the save had, had gone past the day, he didn't play right wing back at all. But from one pre-season of him training there, and I selected him to play matches, I say this in a few of the videos, in case you don't know, if you have friendlies and you let your assistant take the matches... If you put players in the squad, like you select them to be in the team, the assistant will play those players in those positions. So if you want a player to learn a new position, you can select him. The assistant manager will pick that player and then pick the squad around it, right? So, yeah, that's what he's been doing. He's been playing there well, so in he goes. Why did I pick him originally? 
only right winger that looked like he was going to be worth putting there. So I tell you what, while I'm doing this now, we're getting to the stage here. Let's go through the tactic halfway through because it's really worth explaining why I'm picking players in certain positions. So goalkeeper back three is pretty standard. So the reason 10 is offset to the left is when the players get on the ball, they can have decisions to make in, in the game, right? They get on the ball, they have decisions they're going to have to make. Now, if you get the ball the right-hand side here and there's no link player, the decision is is the striker, right? That's the only thing they've really got on. So what that does, it forces the right-hand side to be more direct than the left. So the right wing back or the right centre mid here, they see nothing. They've either got to travel into the space with the ball or play it in behind. Those are the only two options. It forces you to be more direct one side than the other. Now, I don't want to just be an indirect team all the time. So on the left-hand side, we've got an offset 10. So when they get the ball here, they've actually got a link player and they've got overloads they can create here. If it goes into one of them, they can create like a... If the ball goes wide to the wing back, for example, these two could end up being spare. One of them could be spare anyway by the fact there's two players occupying that sort of half space or wider zone, depending on how wide the play is. And you tend to get more ball at play this side and more exploitation on the right side. So that's the way it's sort of designed. If I put them in the middle... I sort of get the similar patterns on either side, and that's not what I want. I want one side to be more direct than the other, uh, generally speaking. He will drift inwards and get involved, and he'll end up on times on that side. So there'll still be moments where he gets across, but generally speaking, we have our build-up side, exploit side. That's the idea of it anyway. And although the tactic is direct, because when we play out, when these lads have three and a four, they tend to bounce passes quite a lot amongst each other in the match engine, in the way that it currently is, so this isn't really how direct we are. It's sort of to combat how passive they are. So it ends up, we end up being quite a mixed passing style team, I would say, generally. Um, that's how I would describe it. So with that being said, the wing backs, especially on the right-hand side, are really wingers. They're wingers that we're converting back. So I don't really care how bad defensively these two players are because they're really in possession wingers. If this player is a winger that can't defend, that's good because in possession, I get what I want. He's going to be traveling with the ball. He's going to be aggressive. He's going to be in 1v1 situations a lot in possession. And defensively, he might get caught every now and again, and that's whatever. If he's a full back that can't really attack and dribble, that really hinders us because every time we get the ball to the right-hand side, that 1v1 is lost and all we've got is crosses into the box and that's very one-dimensional. Um, so you've got to be careful with that. Now, in terms of then strikers, you've got your pacey in behind striker and your player that's good in the air because there's a lot more directness this side. So they're dribbling with it and they're crossing it. You want that player to be good in the air. It's likely to be well-worked this side more and then cut backs across. So this guy doesn't have to be good in the air, but this one does. And you've got your holding midfielder, your box-to-boxer -boxer, and a back three. That's pretty much it in its essence. Hopefully that makes sense uh, to everybody. So now we know that for the rest of the tactic, let's continue on then. So our holding midfield player, who do we reckon? Okay, so for the holding role, there are that many players to play in that position, which is quite a few. Now, the ones that stand out to me, Inglesius is going to play, I think it's my box-to-boxer. -boxer. I've already got him as captain, actually, so he's going to play it. So he's going to play there as my box-to-boxer. -boxer. Now, the holder, I'm not sure. I, I'm edging towards him. I don't know why. I just think that he might be right, but they could all do it. Yeah, let's go Let's go him. Maxime Bernauer. It's really a blind pick, to be honest. It could have been any of them. Number 10, then. Cabal on loan. Coaches rate him. They do like him. He was a first choice 10 or attacking midfield player for a team in Liga 1 last season. So he's an option. So is... Oh, so is this lad, though. Um, can he do a bit up front for us? He could, actually. Right, I've got a lot of the wingers or players that can play wide learning to play wing back because we had no right back. So they were all being told to learn to play there, regardless if they played there or not in pre-season. He could also play striker him. We need one of these to play as a 10. Now, Kabal is left-footed and he is learning to play there for the same sort of reason. I was a bit unsure on the fullbacks. I think the inevitable situation, if we don't start off really well, is going to be that Kabal goes wing back and this guy plays as the 10 and we get them both into the team because I can't really have one of them not in the team, I don't think. But for the first game, we will. I think, well, we'll see actually, because I know that this guy here, I mean, he's six. He's a 6'2 winger. He could play wing back, but I saw this on his profile. Movement off the ball makes him constant thorn for the defenders and he has pace. So he's got good off the ball and good pace. If his finish is even like 10, he's going to be a useful striker. So I thought, okay, let's whack him in at striker. He already played there a little bit. So he's been learning to play there. So I'm going to give him a go as a left striker. Um, that's He could play as a 10. He could play left wing back. We have got three options, I think, for wing back. So we're not completely stuck there. But if he plays striker, that means I only have to fill out the other place with one of these two. I don't think Pierre is that good in behind. Look, he's good in the air and he's got a good spot for a pass. So really, he should be at the left striker, but I can't play. I haven't really got anybody else. I've got uh, Gory here who has a little bit of pace, actually. So maybe we could have Gory in there. I think for the first game, we won't. This guy's out for three to five months. That is with a target man up front. So... Uh, when he comes back, he'll be on the bench. 
that's pretty good, I think. That gives us a nice little first squad to, to start from. We'll see how this goes. I mean, I have no idea what to expect, to be honest with you. It could be anything, but we'll see what happens. Um, at least everybody's fit. That's a, that's a positive. Here we go then. First game of the season. Let's see what their prediction is. The other team we're playing against here. FCSM are actually right next to us in the predictions. And the next team we're playing after that are down, slightly further down. So two potentially winnable games off the bat. But the, this could be tough away from home. Right, let's get into it. First game of the season. Come on, Paris. Okay, so the manager says, I want to be impressed today. Go and put on the show. By the way, before we continue, I did get some staff in. And I basically... For the coaches, I just looked at personality, didn't, can't see the attributes anyway, didn't search them, I just looked for the personality, and for the other roles like your sports scientists, etc., I just put out adverts and just picked people based on, well, random things really, so. Oh, we did get Kaka in though, to train some of the youngsters, he came up in our little search, so. Yeah, there might not be in there as Kaka, Kaka's coming to start the revolution of Paris FC against Paris Saint-Germain. He's uh, going to start the revolution for us to try and take them over, we've got our first big name in as a former player, in as a coach, but, uh, you know. Slow and steady. We'll get there. We've got Canton are in, but not Eric. Kevin. Here we go. The first game is away. FCSM are going to play a 4-3-3. They have got some players never heard of. Is that Sayu Dumbia, left wing? Could have had one that I've heard of. Paris FC, love that. In our 3-5-2, 3-4-1-2, 4 2 I don't know how you want to describe it. It's any of those for you. And we are underway. First highlight of the save. And it's going to go back to the keeper. He's going to take some touches. Is this a real highlight or is this a nothing highlight? Is it a real highlight? It could be. So for those of you that have been following my Burton save, you're going to see the similar tactic at the start, but obviously that save, the tactic is dependent on the players that we get through the, the intake. And this save, it's just, we'll just see how we go, really. It's just something I thought I wanted to start off with because um, I wanted to use it, really. It's a tactic I've not actually released yet, really. And I think it's actually a really good tactic, and I quite like the way that it works. I've got a four-at-the-back version of it, which I do want to try at some point, which is effectively as it is, but I've got it like in a 4-3-3 with the, uh, the 10 offset. And I don't know, we'll, we'll try that at some point in probably both saves, to be honest. Right, here we go then. Long, well, it was a free kick, wasn't it? Lafort just whacks it into no man's land. The fullback gets to it. Plays into the field. They're going to build their attack. They are going to keep going. Oh, we want it. The converted striker goes through. And he scores. Come on, Paris. It's 1 0 already. What a start for the boys. We win it off of them playing out from the back. And it's 1 0 to Paris. Love that. Can only place it back to the centre back. Takes touches. Doesn't know where to go with it. He's got nothing on because of the, the shape that we've got. Goes through and a 1v1 finish. There you go. 1 0 Paris. Okay, going behind. Am I going to get to this easy? Lafort, what are you doing? That's it. Get back to the keeps. Let's play out this side. Wing back, you on? Nope. Okay, travel with it. That's it. Travel with it. Travel with it. So this is what I mean, right? There's nobody in our tactic in a centre mid line. Think of it like that. I can't click it right now because I'm on a replay. But there's nobody in our centre mid line or our attacking field line. So we've just got centre back, DM, striker. So there's nobody here for a link pass. So these two are marked. So what does he do? I've got space. Travel with it. Travel, travel, travel with it. He still isn't getting committed. Now, if this guy would have committed, he could go in here. Now, right here in real life, that's obviously on. And so is he going to ball into space and turn on to. So he just travels with it. Now he's got past all the lines. Now, this guy needs to make a little running behind him. We've actually got two there. That's our striker and our shadow striker there. Both in the same space. But now, oh, look at this. Please. Please. Kabal, you just ruined it. I like it. Coffee throws it into Hemel. Back into the centre back who takes some touches. Travels with it a little more. Oh, my Christ. What was that? Goes back to their keeper. Slow press from us. They've got nobody spare here. We've done well defending that. Good. Well done, boys. Love that. Into the striker. Straight into him. Yes, there it is. Into the shadow striker. Left wing back might want this now. Oh, he's open all day. Now, oh, okay. I thought it was worth going to somebody else then, but okay. Cabal plays it across. Converted striker. Hits the keeper. Highlight started quite aggressive. This could be their highlight on the counter. Just by the way that the highlight started. I've seen these before. Sissoko plays it through. What a slide ball that was. Good defending. Lafort gets in there. That was good. That's probably the end of the highlight. Okay, half time. We've said to the players, I think we're doing well, but we can definitely find another gear and take charge of the match. And I'll leave Kabal for five minutes. I'll take him off on the 50 just to get us into the second half a little bit. Make sure we reset that tone a little bit. Now we're going to make the change here. So let's take off then him and put on... I think, yeah, the other lone player that seems also really decent. Dominated the game pretty well so far. Over a double XG compared to theirs. They are the home side as well, don't forget. Um, Hamill's playing pretty poor. Take off and put on Gory up front. Still nothing's happening. That's good. Okay, there's a highlight here. They go long. We just win it, but the wrong player sort of went for that really. Oh, no. Shredded. Should have been a goal. Ring the changes. That was dangerous. Can we see it? Oh, there's 10 minutes left. The time is ticking away. We made all our subs. We've done our... Little change to see out the game completely. 
added sign as a highlight. Lads, don't throw it away. Get it in the box and head it either in the goal or over the bar out for a goal kick because that'll, that'll be enough time for us to reset then. It's headed away. Just shoot. Just shoot. If you clear it over the bar, who cares? No, that's the worst thing that could have happened. Get back. Ref, surely that's it. Come on. Yes, get in there. Big 1-0 win. That was an important win because that's a quite a tough team away from home, I think. Just judging on the season preview, the fact that they were they were uh, ranked one place below us. To play them first game of the season, that was quite important to get the early win. How did Bordeaux... I'm worried about Bordeaux because Bordeaux have decent stuff. They drew their first game. Now, Bordeaux weren't the favourites. Oh, they're the favourites now. They weren't the favourites when I looked the first time. I swear that's changed. I could be wrong, but I swear that changed. Okay, I'll see you in a few days for the game against QRM, which is our first game in August. Okay, we've been forced into two changes for this game. I think that Cabal was a little bit tired for this game starting, I think. Well, he's not. I could have forced him, but I don't need to force him, do I, really? And the other change is left-back. Florence Hanny, our vice-captain, is up for well, four to five weeks, so he's out. We're going to play We're gonna play Hadjam here first, but that could easily be where Cabal goes and plays wing-back and uh, Mehdi plays our number 10 going forwards but we'll just see how this goes I want to try and keep the squad as close as possible going into the second game because the first game was obviously so good and Glazius does play CDM he's just not natural there yet okay then so the manager says this match we should be winning make sure we do okay they are going to play a 4-3-1 I would no that can't be that's not no I think it is is it no it's not okay I think it's a Gustavo Sangare no okay Set piece then. Hadjam whacks it into Coffee. Is that a penalty referee? Always want it back. Surely. And I was looking at the assistant referee because I thought he was going to flag something. But yet again, the the converted winger to striker, I you know, he's got a long name, hasn't he? But he, yeah, he's managed to score again from another mistake from the other opposition uh, playing up from the back and stuff there. Just freezes on the ball. Goalkeeper saves it with his foot. Unfortunate for them, it goes straight to our striker. That's 1 0. Plays it back into him. Good one. Two plays across. Surely. Oh, he plays it in the air. No. Why would you do that? Left wing back now. Yes. 1-2. Are oh, just going to skin him himself? Yes! What a goal! Okay, now, had jam here. I'm really surprised at this. So here, if you're like a more of a fullback type than a wingback, like in this situation right here, I'm thinking he slides him in for a shot or it's like a 1 and a 2. But he's actually, he's got obviously got enough pace or acceleration to take that little touch and then whip it in. And uh, he's found the striker. And what a finish that is. 2-0 to Paris FC. I'm really pleased, to be honest. I'm quite relieved because the expectations are quite high and if you get off to a slow start you just get put under pressure immediately right so i'm actually really pleased at the start we've had so far and uh yeah 2-0 to uh, paris fc there is a really high likelihood that i will end up playing multiple different formations and tactics across the save that's what happened with barnsley and uh, and happened on the uh, the munich save as well and on the boston save all the money ball saves i've done across youtube and twitch i've always started off with the tactic and i've never ended with one so uh yeah this is just this is just for now uh, i think the hardest thing with back threes is because there's such a lack of AI teams that play back threes, especially ones that are successful, that you haven't got many teams to base your stats off if that's what you're going to look at. But with FM Stag's new um, like baseline that we're going to use, we can do it because he has factored in wingbacks, you see. So, you know, it's interesting. It's an interesting concept. Got to be honest with you, right now, where I'm personally feeling right this second is I'm feeling like using Stag's baseline and pivoting just to using that for now to see how successful it is, how good it is. They will stick with the same team. Now, what's starting to worry me is old Pierre here clearly doesn't have the pace to be a threat on the right-hand side because he's never really... The highlights never start with him or involve him, do they, on the right-hand side? But it's always on the left and it's always Morgan here getting the, getting the goals and the chances. So... My current concern is I think he's a little too slow to play that role. We could switch them, but I don't know if I want a left footer there. Because if they get played in, he'll have to try and cut on his left all the time. It might work. Should we try it? Let's try it. Okay, highlight. They go long. We retrieve the ball nice and easily. Hadjan plays it into the middle centre-back. But now it uh, takes a few touches. He's got long... He's got, he's got tries, long passes as a trait. Now we've worked it. Iglesias goes through. He shoots and he almost hits that first row of seats there. Coffee. Throws it into Morgan, gets it back off him, whacks it into nobody, gets blocked. But now it gets another chance, plays it right the way across, and Mehdi scores. Is it offside? The assistant referee was running back, and it's not, and it's going to be three. When the assistant referee goes running backwards, sometimes I think he's going to put his flag out, but he's not. It's going to stay 3 0 on that. It's probably going to be game over. And what a start to the save for Paris FC. We're coming for you, Paris Saint Germain. We're coming for you. Don't worry about your Neymars and your Messies. We've got Morgan and whatever this guy's name is. Right, let's bring the changes. Coffee's had a good game. Let's put Lopez right wing back. Let's put um, Fury there as well. Let's put Gory at right striker. And let's put Ndai middle centre back. Just ring the changes. Why not? 
But that is both games now where the opposition have had one absolute clear-cut chance and they've missed, which is, um, yeah, something to note, obviously. And Dai hasn't played well at centre-back there at all. Lads, are we going to recover this or what? Are we going to recover our shape? We're just going to let him get in behind. What are we doing? Get rid of it. Get rid of it. They're going to get a shot away. Sangare shoots from distance. Keeper catches that. And please, he caught that. It looked like it was going to be a goal highlight for some, for some reason, but it's not. And Dai plays it long into Hamill. We work it to the right-hand side. And Glacius into Gory. Gory has options. He wants to use us. Disgusting referee. Get that red card out, please. And send him off. Get him out. Get him gone. Send him. Thank you. And they have it 3-0 to Paris FC. Well, that's really good. That was more expected than the first result. The first result, I had no idea what was going to happen. First game of the season, when you're not the clear favourite, but you're playing away from home, is always difficult to, to judge. Um, nice. We had we had a bumper crowd, apparently. What's our finances like? We've dropped a little bit. So our projection is to be 5 million in debt at the end of the season. That's not great. But this one doesn't matter because that's not factoring if we get promoted, is it? That's... So we don't really care about past this point. But it's going to be 5 million in the red. Probably get a bonus for going up though. So probably breaking even, I would guess, really. It's just not factored in the, the money we would get in bonuses for getting promoted and that kind of stuff, right? So in terms of the stats, we're not going to look at it too much just yet because there's only two games, right? But we will go into this in detail as we go. And I'll have to make a load of views myself for all the positions we're going to scout for starting maybe in January if we have some money. If we don't have any money, we might have to wait until the end of the season. So the season starts like this. Bordeaux, we've got two points. That's good. I, I was afraid they'd be one of the teams that just goes and stays in front of everybody and that only leaves one other place to get promoted. But we're in the top two. They've had a poor start. That's good news. Next episode then. Oh, it's there, isn't it? 100%. I really don't think we're going to get any money to spend. If I happen to sell somebody for a load of money and I have some money to spend, we'll come back for this game. We'll do some scouting and then we'll do the Bordeaux game. But uh, I don't think we're going to have that situation. So what I'll probably says we'll come back for the Bordeaux game and the Grenoble game. That's probably what we'll do and come back right after the transfer window closes. See how the start has sort of gone. We've got a lot of away games in there, haven't we? That's four away games, only two home games in the first six games there. And then we've got Bordeaux and Grenoble. So we'll come back for those two, I think, in the next episode. But that is going to do it. I hope you enjoyed the series. Hope you enjoyed the Moneyball concept and how it's going to work. Um, I absolutely love this series. And I am so excited for when we actually get into the scouting and we get into all the all the useful parts of the save and the bits where I can provide either custom views and things like that to help you out as well if you're going to do Moneyball yourself while you're watching and do your own Moneyball saves. I can't wait to do it. It's one of my favourite things to do in FM. It's a monumental challenge and I cannot wait to play against Paris Saint-Germain. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.